I'm a real estate agent who just happens to be a feng shui consultant. Most people don't know what feng shui is or how exactly it can help you get what you want in your life. But when they realize how many benefits feng shui can offer, people get really excited and sometimes overzealous. But beware, it is possible to become feng shui paranoid. In today's video, I'll tell you how not to be feng shui paranoid and share where to focus your attention in feng shui to get the best results. You can apply this to the home where you currently live, the home you want to sell, or the home you want to purchase in the near future. Susan Chan here, Feng Shui Realtor based in New York City. I'm sure you're watching these videos because you want to feel great in your home and also in your workspace, which is probably now one and the same. And I'm sure you also want to become a better version of yourself. Feng Shui can help you do that and more but sometimes people can become very enthusiastic with research and try to learn everything there is to know about a subject leading to either analysis paralysis or chaotic frenzy. By the time they come to me, here are some of the questions they ask. I read that I shouldn't be sleeping with my head pointing in north, south, east, or west. Or is it true that the color red, green, or blue is bad for me? Will I have a good or a bad year? I wanna let you know that this will be your number one downfall fear, or what I call in this instance, feng shui paranoia. In my feng shui practice, I always tell my clients to avoid focusing on the negative, such as focusing on generalizations that don't apply to you, which usually leads to fixing what's not broken, being fearful of bad energy of bad luck. Instead, I tell my clients to focus on the positive, because when you're focusing on the positive, you won't even notice the not so positive things. Who has time for that, really? So here are the questions I really want you to ask yourself instead. What do you want to create in your life? And speaking of positive things, what do you want more of in your life? How do you want to feel in your space? And that's a great question for buyers. And how do we highlight the best assets of your home? A great question for sellers. And once we know those answers, then together we'll get to work. If you want more abundance in your life, we make sure your home is inviting for abundance or we find you a home that can support this goal. If your health is weak and you want better health, we take a look at what may not be supporting you and discuss what your options are. If your kids lack focus, we'll look at their bedroom and their workstation, not the master bedroom because that's not the issue. As a real estate and feng shui advisor, I customize the plan specifically for you and the people who use your space because that's how it works. We make a specific plan to get a specific outcome. So who's on board for not being feng shui paranoid? We've got 13 days left in 2020, and it's a great time to take inventory of what you already have in your life. And if you haven't watched episode seven, how to be more abundant, watch it today. And after watching it, take some time to really think about what you wanna create in your life next year, whether you're planning to buy, sell, or generally upgrade your life in 2021 and beyond. I hope that this video has helped you shift your energy from being feng shui paranoid to knowing where to focus your attention in feng shui to get the best results. Tune in next week for more feng shui real estate tips and remember, feng shui is not a luxury, but a necessity. Did you like this video? Please share with your friends, subscribe, or leave a comment or question below and see you next week.